I'm interested that maybe you and the you and me might be the only two people in this building. We walked in and saw the Patrick Beverly tweet, and again, context. There are no less than five tweets from Patrick Beverly last night with regard to where he would love to go play next. He's responding to fans who are like, dude, you're getting bought out in Orlando. Come play for our team. And so he's saying something nice about each team. Like, hey, come back to the city. The Bulls need leadership. And Patrick responds, playing at the crib is definitely a vibe. Hashtag Chicago kid. All right, so <laughs> okay. there's that, right? Here's another one that says, come back to Houston. Uh, his response, good times. I miss the H. Okay. Heart emoji. <laughs> okay. Um, here's another one. Come back home, Pat. Hashtag Clipper Nation. He responds, heart emoji. Oh. Just okay. heart. No words. Just heart. Um, dear Timberwolves. Sign Patrick Beverly. Sincerely, Minnesota. His response? Real one. Heart emoji. Oh, okay. Right? Uh, one year in Minnesota. And yep. then you and Draymond on the court together? Magic. Let's go, Dub Nation. And the response is, winning at the highest level, a player's dream. Double heart emoji. Du- double? Double. Double up. Uh. Uh, Double heart emoji. Yes. Man. Okay. So, All right, Pat Bev. It's not like he's actually pointing directly at the Warriors, and it's not like I think the Warriors are looking for another guard. I don't think that. However, um, there are a couple of interesting things here. Number one is that Draymond Green, after the game last week, is literally out here going, essentially, we're missing the dog in us. Yes. Like, I'm doing what I can. I've not been able to get the rest of the players on this team to have the defensive dog in us. And if that's true, and what you're having is problems with motivation on the defensive end, well, then Patrick Beverly in your locker room, you could convince me of that. It makes some sense. Right. At the very least, he's a guy who can go out there and be feisty. He can guard the basketball. You don't have a lot of on-ball defense right now. He's probably not going to be a real scoring threat. And at times... You have lineups where you don't have a lot of scores, Draymond Green included. However, if you want a guy to go out there and get into Ja Morant, if you want a guy to go out there and run around and get feisty with Devin Booker, Patrick Beverly is the kind of instigator, the kind of defensive presence that if I'm looking in the buyout market, he's a guy you can at least wind up and throw out there and go do some things. I could give you two responses, one for and one against, just from the X's and O's standpoint, which is A, Dante DiVincenzo, I had even Chenzo, uh, has been way too good to have somebody who sort of would come in in the same position and, and you'd think in the same spot on the floor, the same lineups. Is he going to come in and be a part of the second unit? And go next to Jordan Poole. Well, it's like DiVincenzo's got that. And I don't want DiVincenzo off the floor. He's been their best bench player, uh, not named Jordan Poole. And he's been their best two-way player off the bench for sure. However, here's the other side of this. Well, you went out and acquired GP2. Where exactly was he supposed to go? Right. It's the exact same size, same player who does same things. Um, now, they're different offensive players. But the idea that... This is somebody who'd come in and be a one slash two guard who can really be a lockdown defender. If you were going to acquire GP2, now let's say GP2 can't play the rest of the year. Right. Now are you interested in Patrick Beverly? Absolutely. And I'm interested in him anyway, because to me, you don't have enough backcourt defense right now. You've got Steph and Jordan Poole who play a bunch. Neither one of them is a very good defender. DiVincenzo. Good defender. He's not elite. And I know Patrick Beverly is not the same elite defender he once was, but he does give you that snarl factor. And if you have GP2 and you have Patrick Beverly, you got Draymond Green, you got Andrew Wiggins, all of a sudden now you can put out in spots a defensive heavy lineup. Maybe you have Steph Curry as the fifth man in that lineup. I don't know how it would work in terms of too many guards, but the more defensive bodies that you can throw at a team, the better. And again, we're not talking about a guy who's going to play 25 minutes a night. And by the way, Patrick Beverly 
averaging 27 minutes a game for the Lakers. He played a bunch this sure, year. Sure, So he's, he's got, still fresh he's enough. Got, he's played enough to be ready to go. Yeah, he's got plenty of physical side, whatever, action ready left in the tank. I don't think there's any question there. I, what about the emotional side, though? Let, let's just be honest. Warrior fans don't like Patrick Beverly. Yeah. Uh, no, nobody likes Patrick Beverly. We walked in this morning, Kyle's like, no. No, 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 no. You, you can't put on my uniform. And I immediately thought about it, and I go, I get it. I My first response is the same. There are a handful of players out there in every league. For me, Dylan Brooks, Russell Westbrook, Chris Paul, James Harden, the players that we Warrior fans have really rooted against and who have been adversaries, I don't want them on my team, except for history proves that I'm full of it. History proves that you, the fan, are full of it. Oh, I don't want that guy on my team. Right. Until Richard Sherman does come, and then you love him. And then you love him. I mean, a mediocre receiver, LOB, screaming in your TV. I've never Turkey been. Turkey on the 50. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't. When Richard Sherman did that, it stuck with me the whole night. I was livid. I'm like, I can't stand that guy. Right. And, and then four years later, I was at the game when Minnesota and Kirk Cousins came to town for the playoffs, and Richard Sherman picked off Kirk Cousins, and I stood up and did pirouettes in my seat. I love you, Sherman. Whoa! Exactly. We're full of it. We're all full of it. For we, the most part. We I think there is a line, though. Maybe, but we'll switch. Our, I don't know if I could deal with Dylan Brooks, but it's what we were talking about. You know, Styles. Right. we were all talking about this earlier, like, when someone gets issued the uniform you root for, what is it exactly you're supposed to do? Root against your team? If that player is somebody who's done things that you cannot stomach. And I mentioned Trevor Bauer earlier as an example. Trevor Bauer is out of baseball right now. The Dodgers are paying him $25 million to not pitch. He probably can still be an effective pitcher in Major League Baseball. Yep. So he sits out this year, and then next year... All of a sudden, he's throwing on the side, and he's hitting 95 on the gun again, and it's like, boy, you're a team that needs a starting pitcher. Is Trevor Bauer a player that you could stomach? Now here, I think that would be a player that would be over the line, not only because of what Agreed. he's done off Agreed. the field, but the, the person he is and the fact that he's a Dodger. All those things. Now, you as a Giants fan, let's say you get into next year, and your rotation is one right-handed pitcher away from being really good and Trevor Bauer's out there and the Giants decide that they sign Trevor Bauer are you going to boycott the team you're a diehard Giants fan I, I, you I go to know. 20 games a year minimum you'd go to more if you could I don't know if I'd, I yeah I don't think I'd ever boycott the team I would hate I would hate that I would probably right. not I would I would knowingly not buy tickets to that game if Trevor was was pitching right but, I mean, look, our teams do this to us all the time. How y'all feel about the owner of the Giants? How you doing? Everybody like that? Well, which owner? You're talking about the... Fair, and some people don't care, but I know right. a lot of people, some people who do. Some people support the causes that he supports. Yes, and there are many who don't, and there are many who are very turned off by right. it, but I don't think it gets to the point of, I'm not buying tickets, or I'm not buying, uh, I'm not going to a game. Uh, teams do this to us all the time. It's on different levels. Is it about playing? Is it about politics? Is it about the legal realm? For me, the Bay Area as a sports market has always made the legal realm a priority. And even though Trevor Bauer was never found guilty of anything, that sort of dips a toe in, in that water for sure. Deshaun Watson is another name. Would you want him as the quarterback of your team? My answer would be no. For multiple reasons. One, he doesn't look like he can play like he used to. But the bigger one is, I, I like, I just, I don't, even though Deshaun's thing is nowhere near what a Ray Rice or any of that stuff was, right. I just, that's sort of that, like, mental headache that I, I want to go to the game and feel good. And, and I know for a lot of fans they don't care about this, but when I hear that a clubhouse has a whole lot of chemistry and – they're good dudes, and I know we say that even just it's like, oh, it actually means they're just a good interview. We don't right. know Deep that they're down, good we dudes. we don't know. We don't know, and every locker room is going to have good people and bad people because there's just so many of them. But that matters to me if 
These are people that have chemistry. They get along. They look other people in the eye. They're respectful to everyone around them. That matters to me. It doesn't matter to some fans. But Patrick right. Beverly is totally different. Patrick Beverly will give you an interview. He'll look you in the eye. Right. He'll also annoy the living hell out of you on the court. When he's on the other team. Yeah. When he's your guy. If we, I don't, you know. And we, we have one. His name's Draymond Green. And we've had players on the Warriors who have inflicted injury upon the opposition and you're more likely going to excuse that when it's your guy. Like in Memphis... We made one an executive. Exactly. <laughs> and that was one moment in whether or not it was clumsy or intentional, only he knows. But Dylan Brooks in Memphis is probably not reviled. He's probably revered more than he is reviled based on the way he plays. Marcus Smart's a great example, and people on the YouTube have mentioned that already before in terms of, you know, he's trying to twist guy's leg and whatnot. If he's on your team... You're a Marcus Smart fan. If you're playing against him, Patrick Beverly, another good example, you're going to be less likely to be somebody who wants to support him. Yeah, you know, it's interesting, too. I think even in the legal realm, it matters the way people handle the accountability after it happens. We got some people on the uh, the YouTube chat right now saying, um, you know, asking, would I root for Mike Vick? Um, listen, I now am a dog owner. I, I, I love animals. That turned my stomach to a degree that is unimaginable. And, and you know, there's, there's geographic, cultural stuff in this conversation for sure. Um, but I will say this about Mike Vick. Mike Vick did not come back and thumb his nose at, at what was going on. Mike Vick took accountability. Mike Vick came back and was incredibly apologetic. I think Mike Vick felt like, um, he learned some things in that process. I'm a big fan of second chances. I'm a big fan of second chances. When somebody keeps messing up and they're like, what? Manziel, Bauer. If you keep messing up and you're like, leave me alone. This is not fair. You're, you're, uh, this is out of context. Ah. I, I mean, even... Even Watson has not been great with the way I feel he's addressed this situation. Uh, he's been very evasive, I right. think, is, is, is maybe the best word. Like that, I don't know. That just doesn't, that doesn't feel good. I want to feel good when I'm sitting there watching my team. Right, and there are certain transgressions or crimes that are more acceptable in different parts of the country, different markets. We know here that, you know, even the Giants owner, for example, I don't know... If he's ever done anything illegal, but we know that some of the causes that he supports may not align with the majority of the fan base. And so at that point, you have to make a determination. Are you that upset by what he does with his own money and in his own private time? If that upsets you so much, then don't be a fan of the team. Right. I don't he has think gone that, back on his word. There's that. Like, right. you're right. It's not illegal. Uh, but when you come out and you're like, not going to do this anymore, and then you keep doing this over and over. Fine. You know, but, yeah. And we can have a discussion as to whether or not that's anyone's business or if that affects the bottom line for the Giants. I don't think that attendance is down because Mr. Johnson happens to support these causes. Uh, I, don't, I agree with that. I attendance mean, it, is going to be down because Aaron Judge and Carlos Correa play on different teams. Exactly, because your product is not that appealing, uh, and the expense of your product has not gone down commensurate to the product you're putting out there. I think that's a much bigger factor than where he spends his political dollars. Uh, 888-957-9570. Let's go to Clayton in Union City. Um, hey, Clayton, you're on with Willard and Dibs. What are you doing? Hey, uh, well, I'm driving down the uh, 880 corridor, so uh, lovely traffic today. Oh, good old uh, Nimitz. But, Damn it. Oh, yeah, the old Nimitz Highway. But yeah, you're talking about, I don't like Patrick Bever Beverly, but... I also hated Rafi Torres, and then he came to the Sharks. I did not like Sherman, and then he came to the Niners, and then I was, you know, a little. I respected. I always respected their play, but I didn't like them as on the other team. So I think for for Patrick Beverly, it's like, well, what do we need? More uh, defensive junkyard dogs, and uh, I'd be okay with it. I'm not happy about it. But I'm like, all right, I can see it. I'm I with you, Clayton. I'm totally with you. Like, I'm not trying to pin anybody with this. This is inherent to sport. This is the way we fan. If the player is on our team, 
we can find a way to wrap our head around it and make excuses for it. If he's on the other team, we think it's absolutely unconscionable. We do, and that's just the way it works. The Dodger fans who threw syringes at Barry Bonds rooted for Manny Ramirez. And, and, and let's point the finger at ourselves. We still look back at Barry Bonds, and we're like, this is the greatest thing that we've ever seen on a baseball diamond. It wasn't clean. Come on. Stop. Was he great? Yes. Was right. he the greatest? Maybe. Was he great before his head was a size eight and a half? Absolutely. Did we enjoy the hell out of all of it? Totally. So I get all the good memories, but it wasn't clean. Right. Of it's, course it wasn't clean. But it's the nature of your team, and you know, you're gonna be more apt to excuse a guy or justify a guy and all the rest of it. And you know, when you look at this situation, Patrick Beverly, he is I don't know if dirty player is fair, Close. but he exactly he annoying. Yeah, he's minimum. on yeah. he's on that edge, and he's a classic guy where if he's on your team, you're going to feel better about him. Draymond Green, I think, is a tremendous example of this. Draymond Green is not a dirty player, but the way he goes about playing the game of basketball, if he's on your team, you love him, and he's won four championships here, so we revere him. Eventually, he will have his number retired. He's going to be one of the all-time great Golden State Warriors, but ask the other 29 teams around the association how they feel right. about Draymond Green. Instigator. Like, th these are instigators. Right. and crybaby and all the rest of it. Yeah, and, and, and teams need those, by the way. Matt Barnes, who was on the show earlier this week, had a little bit of this in him, and he wore so many different jerseys. If he if he if he wasn't wearing your jersey, that was a that was not a player who you found likable when you watched him play. But that was actually his role. So I I don't know these 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 things all sit with us in a different way. Like okay, there was a second last year. I didn't think it was ever going to happen, but the Dodgers allowed Clayton Kershaw to be a free agent last off season. If the Giants had been like yeah one year Clayton Kershaw, how you doing? I love it. You like it? Yeah. And that of all the Dodgers that you want to hate, he was one of the ones. It's, for me, it's tough to hate the guy. He's just damn good. He's a nice guy. He is a shining example. He's a Hall of Fame pitcher. He's the Dodgers' Buster Posey. Like, Dodger yeah, fans feel way the same it. way about Buster that maybe we feel and about And the fact Clayton. that he goes out and it's eight and a third, four hits allowed, and one earned virtually every single time the only reason why you hate the guy is because he's a Dodger. If he was a Minnesota twin, we'd, oh, boy, Clayton Kershaw, he's the best. That's true about all of them, though. Like, yeah, we right. hate the Dodgers because they're Dodgers. But there are certain Dodgers that you hate more sure. based on their Dodgerness. Who's the hated Dodger right now? Who's the one that you're just like, ugh? Is it, Ur is it Urias? Is it the other? Like, Maybe. Because like, usually it has to be someone who's kind of a lifetime Dodger. Like, I'll give you, yeah. like, Trey Turner and Mookie Betts. Only sort of feel like Dodgers to me. Those are sort of Dodgers. Kershaw, you just detail, doesn't give you a whole lot to hate. Is it Max Muncy? Yeah, guy, probably. That's you know, a good call. Yeah. It's go get it out of the ocean guy. Yeah. yeah. And something about My Urias. Dodger hatred ended. Yeah. yeah. I, something about Urias. <laughs> I, I mean, I like watching him pitch. He's a great pitcher. Yeah, I don't like watching him pitch. You don't like the glasses, and you don't I, like I the... want the I want the other I want the hitter to crush the ball every time. Oh, he's filthy though. Yeah, he is. That's why I don't like him. I get it, but I don't mind the Dodgers who stink. Those are great, <laughs> of course. I love watching. One of the reasons I was open to Cody Bellinger coming to the Giants is I, he doesn't bother me because he always would strike out until he went and got that stupid hit to win Game Five right a few years ago. Outside of that, I was like, I why I love watching Bellinger out there. Yeah, he throws the ball into the stands. It was great. I'm like, you do you, Cody. I like this. <laughs>